this application of generative AI in healthcare uh, shows what you can do when you do not only focus on tuning a single model, but instead really uh, rethink complete end-to-end -end applications. Uh, in this case, uh, how we do healthcare data integration. We are going to talk about what are the key goals uh, when we really, what, what do we mean when we say take raw data, multimodal data, and enable us to build and ask about patient journeys. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about uh, really what we've learned uh, building this capability uh, for different parts of the requirements. So uh, what we want to do is we want to build a system that translates straw to gold. So we want to take the, the initial raw data, uh, everything we have about the patient, and be able to create really a full patient journey, right? So we can take whatever we have, files, file messages, structured data, unstructured data, all of it together. And, and we want to uh, build a data model that un, uh, includes a full view of the patient over months or over years. Uh, we want to understand timelines. Okay, so when we talk about dates, when we talk about relative times, we want to be able to understand and ask questions about it. And then out of this, we want to be able to ask questions about our patients and we want to ask them in natural language, right? So just, just prompt the question, uh, tell me about these patients. Do they have a history of this? Has this ever happened to them? What are we planning to do with them next? Either about a single patient or uh, we want to build complete cohorts. Right, so you know, give me all the patients, uh, you know, at, at you know stage three uh, cancer that are triple negative, right, and have not yet started any type of immunotherapy, right, or that have had you know uh, this kind of side effect in the last six months. So uh, that's overall what we want. We want a system that explains its uh, answers and cites its sources that is consistent, right, so that when when a Doctor sees an answer and something doesn't seem quite right. They can actually go to the source and see where it came from. So uh, the second thing we want is we want to get all of this you know, beautiful, normalized, unified patient journey over time, but we want to really start with raw data. So no data pre-processing, basically, you know, give us the straw, give us the junk data as it is. Uh, the data can be unstructured. The data can be multimodal. So as you can see, we will take fire, we'll take you know, database data, but we'll also we'll take PDFs, we'll take HL7, we'll take text files, we we'll take CSVs. And uh, basically any file format that has some kind of information about the patient, it does not need to be normalized to specific terminologies. It does not even need to be self-consistent with itself. It does not need to be absolute or certain, right? It would be something that the patient said or something that we think happened, but we are unsure about. And the data, of course, continuously updates. So the goal is really to take kind of the real uh, raw, unnormalized, uncertain, uh, multimodal medical data that goes into a healthcare system. And as it keeps updates, we need to uh, really understand what can we say about this patient consistently and accurately over time. The third set of goals that we have is uh, basically says, and we want to do this for real. Uh, meaning in real production systems, right, with large healthcare systems. So we need to build a system so that it is designed to process PHI. It does not share data. It can run within a secure air gap environment. It does not call random APIs on the internet. It's accurate. So it uses healthcare specific LLMs. It can explain its answer. It's consistent. You ask the same question twice, you get the same response. It's easy to operate, so we do not want to use some proprietary particular uh, you know, uh, data models or, or types of infrastructure. This needs to run on commodity infrastructure that your DevOps people, SecOps people, Sec people understand, know how to monitor, how to secure, how to backup, how to patch, and how to update. We want to use an open data model, uh, so we don't want to load all the data into some proprietary system so that you can only query uh, our, our, kind of our database. Uh, on the contrary, we want to use a, an industry standard format. As you see here, we, we map everything to the OMOP data model, right, which is a relational uh, database, a data model and industry standard. Uh, we want this to scale to at least millions of patients, if not tens of millions of patients, which means many billions of documents potentially and inputs. Uh, and we want uh, the, the resulting work we do on the unified patient journey. Uh, yes, we want to have a chatbot ask questions. But we also want to be able to use the same thing to just do dashboards uh, or uh, 
use notebooks, right, and make the data accessible to other machine learning models. So that's what we want. We want to be able to uh, freely ask questions about the complete patient journey, starting with raw medical data uh, in, a, in a real, uh, scalable, consistent, trustworthy enterprise setting. So uh, let's see how this starts. Uh, when you look at uh, patient journeys, patient journeys are very long and very messy. And the, this, uh, you know, the, this photo is an example of one patient, one woman uh, that we tracked over uh, several years. Uh, uh, of course, I mean, the, the data is, is, is not real, uh, but as you say, you know, inspired uh, and based, uh, the, based by two events, uh, but of, of course, the identified through testing. Uh, real people uh, have different diseases over years. Things happen. Uh, they also, they move. Uh, they change hospitals. They see many doctors, right? So especially uh, uh, senior citizens, uh, you see, uh, often see multiple doctors. Uh, if you're a cancer patient in the US, you're going to have more than 1,000 pages of text written about you every year. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of unstructured data, a lot of duplicate data, a lot of copy-paste data. Uh, some mistakes are going to be in there. That's what we get. And here's the high-level uh, process, very high-level set of steps that we conduct. So the data may be structured, coming from the chronic medical record, or of course could be claimed, could be something else, or could be completely unstructured data from semi-structured like a fire to you know, PDF and text files. If it's unstructured data, first of all, we need to uh, uh, extract information from it, make it structured, do some semantic modeling, so understand really in what context are we claiming things. Uh, then essentially here, there is a terminology service, so we do need to take the structured, the unstructured data and map it uh, to a standard set of codes. Uh, so that we said, oh, you know, um, this is a stage four kidney disease. There's the same structured code, right, that, uh, that we apply. Uh, then we, we actually uh, do the data modeling. And in this case, we, we, uh, there are two ways to do this. Here you put this on a knowledge graph or relational database. Here we have chosen a relational database because in real production settings, we, we found that it scales better and it's much easier uh, for ops people to operate. I'm just much more familiar with it. Um, and then we, we look at the, the other exciting uh, steps. We deduplicate and merge. Uh, what's going to happen is if you take all of the source data, you're going to have a lot of duplicated data, a lot of conf conflicting data, uh, different levels of certainty. Uh, so really we have a reasoning process to say, okay, here are 25 indications of symptoms. Uh, what do you want to write as the list of symptoms the patient had that day? It's going to be a shortest list, hopefully with a higher level of confidence. And then of, uh, on top of that, we can even generate new clinical inferences. Uh, like, for example, patient risk scores or you know, uh, population health or revenue cycle inferences. So let's go step by step. Information extraction, especially from unstructured data, means that we read it. And in a completely automated way, uh, we uh, extract uh, entities. Uh, we also understand the context of those entities. So there's a difference between, uh, you know, uh, this is a woman with breast cancer versus uh, this is a woman without breast cancer, or this is a woman with suspected breast cancer, or uh, this, uh, her mother had breast cancer when she was 55, right? So those are completely different assertions, even if it's the same term that was extracted. Uh, we also want to understand relationships, right? So did this happen before this or after that? You know, if there's a tumor, where is it? You know, is it the right lung, the left lung, uh, right? What? You know, what part of it, you know, which kidney did we operate on, what dosage of this specific medication that we provide. So we need to extract uh, those semantic, uh, semantic relations as, as well. Uh, then we need to uh, map everything to standard codes. Uh, this is often a big challenge even on just structured data, right? Even if you only take EHR data or claims data in and you need to normalize it together, uh, there's a whole industry around terminology services, terminology mapping that exists. Our goal here is to come and say, okay, can, can, we just, can we just try to automate and do that? And that's one of the steps within this whole process. A, a very important thing about understanding people over time is just understanding dates. Okay, so if we have a, a, a visit summary of a patient from June 1st that says uh, two weeks ago, he started feeling, uh, you know, knee pain, right, when he wakes up in the morning. And then uh, in uh, uh, September, we are asking, okay, I, I want all the patients who have had knee pain the last six months. Uh, we need to know that in June, when the text says two weeks ago, it means mid-May, and we need to normalize it so that when someone asks in September, 
six months ago, we, we have the normalized data in just run the query and give you the correct result. So uh, normalizing dates and understanding relative time references in unstructured uh, text is very important. And um, one super interesting really reasoning problem is how you merge and deduplicate content. Uh, and it's very uh, specific to the kind of fact you're dealing with. Uh, so for example, if, if uh, you have one entry that says pain and another that says knee pain on the same day, it's probably just knee pain. You probably go for the more specific. Uh, but sometimes you don't. Uh, if you have, for example, three measurements of someone's weight on the same day, probably the most likely is to take the average. Uh, if uh, you will prescribe a medication, but uh, the claim in the pharmacy shows that you actually picked up a different variation, then that's probably what you took, right? So maybe the pharmacy, they gave you, you know, a, a generic, right? And not what you were prescribed, but that's the drug that you're actually taking because that's what they gave you. Uh, so really for each clinical fact, we need to understand what do we do when there are conflicts, when there are uncertainties, right? When there are multiple measurements. So, oh, you have three separate weights on the same day. Right, you, you know, 50 kilograms, 51, and 52 kilograms. I said, well, okay, let's, let's, you know, it's probably 51, right? And we need to have the certainty as well. And all of that, we, uh, you can put it in a knowledge graph uh, because logically it's a knowledge graph. Uh, although in this case, what we chose to do, uh, we chose to adopt the uh, Odyssey OMO common data model, uh, which is a relational data model. And, but really, you can look at it as, as another way to represent this kind of graph over time. Uh, there are two reasons why we picked it. Uh, first, it is an industry standard model. There are a whole lot of tool sets. There's a whole ecosystem of open source tools. Uh, they do everything from calculating risk scores, uh, finding data quality issues, uh, to, uh, to you know, um, structured code creation. That, you know, once you have that form of data model and it's something that's still evolving uh, across the international community, that's one reason. The second reason is really is that uh, once you uh, move to say 50 million patients, three or four billion documents, uh, it's uh, uh, far easier to scale a relational database. You know, we know how to do indexing, we know how to do views, right? Uh, uh, we know how to do sharding, we know how to back it up. And these are things that uh, really are just much easier to do in production in a consistent way than when working with, uh, especially the newer types uh, of, of really uh, graph databases. So uh, that's that's the basic data transformation process here. And the main point is it's it's completely automated. So uh, there's no coding, there's no configuration, really just point us to the raw data. We take it all the way to a, a structured, unified, deduplicated, normalized uh, view of the patient over time. Uh, and then uh, let's see what you can do with it. And let's go back to, uh, if you remember that screenshot of the notebook, uh, this is the same woman, but in a, in a Slightly different visualizations. Uh, just an example of the journey of one patient. So in this specific case, uh, this is we, we have uh, tracked this person, this woman, for over 10 years. When you start with only the structured data from the EHR, okay, so this is what you get from example, say from you know Epiclarity, right, or from you know your EHR or data warehouse. Uh, there were entries across uh, three years because she had three hospitalizations for these three different things in 2015. 2017 and 2019. When we add a text, unstructured data, and specifically the two kinds that were available, one is discharge notes, and the second is the biology reports, uh, there is much more data that becomes available because uh, this woman has been going and doing radiology, like mammography and, and other things since 2011. Uh, so we have data for four more years, and also we have much more data about each, each hospitalization, right? So th there are some things that are only in the discharge notes or the radiology within that hospital. Uh, once we've added also fire resources as a, as a third modality, uh, we found that she actually had another hospitalization, uh, which was really important. Uh, she just, she happened, you know, she happened to be in a different state. Okay, she wasn't home, so she had to go to a different hospital. So there was no record in the each hour of the hospital she, she usually visits, uh, visits. And the only way to get the data in this case was for a, a health information exchange right, and two fire resources, right? So now we have three modalities, right? We have the structured data, we have the free text, and we have the semi-structured fire information. The fourth layer, uh, or kind of the fourth kind of data, is something that we actually calculate. Uh, because uh, once you have all of this information about the patient, you can come and say, okay, I can now calculate things like readmission prediction scores, uh, right? Sepsis risk scores, kidney disease progression scores, right? And they're uh, really 
hundreds uh, of uh, uh, kind of population health quality measures uh, and patient risk scores you can calculate it uh, really and, and just enrich the same model right and for us really just something that's kind of a standard part of the output uh, so here's a view of the the distribution of what kind of data sources are available so you can see here we we had uh, some structured data from the EHR, mostly around the hospitalizations. Uh, we had quite a lot of unstructured text, right, especially with the, all the preventive care, the, the radiology that she did. And uh, we had one, uh, you know, for, for one case, we had a set of fire resources as well. Once you put all of this together within the system, uh, the cool thing is you can just ask questions, right? So, so there's, a, at the end of it, there's a chatbot, right, that's tuned to, to query this specific data model, and you say, Review the data and provide a summary of the patient's health in a short paragraph. And you just, the simple natural language prompt. Uh, and uh, what you start seeing when you when you put in those prompts, those queries, is really is the value of combining multimodal data. Because you can see, for example, within structured data, you can come and say, look, there are five key diagnoses that we see. But once you add NLP, once you add the unstructured text, you can say, look, uh, we also have arthritis here. We have uh, dyspnea here. Um, we have other pulmonary condition, not just COPD. When you had fire, you start adding, so look, there's also potential for uh, neurological issues, right? So there's a whole other set of issues that only came up in the other hospitalization. Um, the, the situation is even more severe in terms of the difference between structured data and the complete view of the patient uh, when you look at preventative care. Okay, and here really, uh, what you just do is, here is the prompt, just describe a document the source of any information about preventive care and preventative care and screening. And you can see in the structured data, it just tells you, look, uh, the JSON data provider does not explicitly list any details related to preventative care. However, when you add the NLP, because we have radiology, we can tell you, look, uh, she, she's done mammograms. Uh, she's done because she's a smoker. She's done lung and respiratory health screening. She's done skin assessments, right, for cancer. She's done blood tests. Uh, and if you look at the uh, fire data, you have additional uh, lab report that she's done additional uh, kind of uh, pulmonary right and breathing uh, uh, breathing capacity uh, tests that were done and even some psychosocial, uh, psychosocial uh, screening that were done at this time so you can see here there's a huge gap between how really how clinically complete and clinically useful the answer is based on how much data you've integrated and just another way to do it is really just look at the entire, entire timeline right you can say look just summarize really the full patient timeline and you can just see that, you know, really, if, if you only, uh, if you don't have all the data integrated, uh, you, you're going to miss a lot of, uh, a lot of these patients' rel clinically relevant history. Uh, what this means in practice, uh, it means that, uh, and this is, you know, something that are kind of the, the, the early uh, customers of this uh, are seeing, uh, is, uh, look, how can you, can you even make a clinical decision? Uh, before really integrated all this multimodal data, right? Structured, unstructured, semi-structured together uh, into one story, right? And uh, here you have a couple of paper here, pa papers here that uh, show the benefit around uh, um, patient risk adjustment, clinical coding, right? Showing that, you know, if you only look, for example, at a, a codes, right? So claims, problem lists, one study says that uh, just over half of entered codes were appropriate and about a quarter were omitted. Another study looked at the problem list and said, look, almost 40% of important diagnoses were only mentioned in the free text. On top of it, there are other things that are only uh, ever in text, uh, things like you know, uh, family history, uh, patient history, uh, not the medications we prescribe you, medications you took at home right before you came to the ER, uh, response to treatment, right? Oh, I tried this, uh, you know, this medication was, I had horrible side effects, let's not do that again. That will be described in text. And uh, which means that this is really a very strong basis to really start building anything from your, you know, uh, clin you know clinical decision support to revenue cycle processes uh, on top of as kind of as a base data model to work with. The, the last thing uh, that's, that's cool and interesting here is that you do not have to ask about a single patient. You can also ask about the whole population. Right, so you can say, look, uh, and here's the exact prompt: Give me patients who were diagnosed with back pain and had spinal fusion. And uh, if you ever try to do something like this in healthcare, uh, you will know that these queries are actually really hard to translate to whatever SQL knowledge graph, uh, whatever the the your, your kind of uh, your data model is, because back pain is not a thing. 
Back pain is a whole set of diagnosis codes, different codes. Spinal effusion also, it's not a one thing. It's, it's a different set of procedures that kind of fall under that name. And there are a lot of issues in healthcare, really, how you map terminologies, how you decide what the codes are, how you do those kind of groupings, uh, how you make sure you, you really mean the same thing when you ask. Uh, here, the way this works, as you can see, you ask the questions, you get the table. Uh, you can see you ask for back pain. Well, here we have backache, we have lower back pain. There are really uh, seven or eight types of conditions that fall under this definition. Same thing with the procedure. We can map this to different specific procedure. Uh, and you can see whether this comes right you know, from, from the EHR itself, right? Or in some cases, in this case, from, uh, from final messages that came. Uh, you can also you can combine modalities. So if you ask what drugs are prescribed after patients are diagnosed with uh, AF, uh, the answer can combine information we have from structured data and unstructured data. We can ask about timelines. So I want this drugs that are prescribed only after the diagnosis happened. I could also ask about before. I could also ask, you know, without the diagnosis, right, uh, having been, you know, done before that. Uh, I can combine terminologies, and all of that is uh, really something that uh, traditional people build whole teams to do, whole teams of data analysis teams to be able to answer those questions. Here, the goal is uh, to automate both the entire data integration, how we build the unified patient journey, and these kind of queries, right? So you can just ask a question, get the response, and then, of course, if you want, you can change the prompt and give feedback if it's not exactly what you want. Uh, one thing we've learned is that we really have to uh, create and find you our own healthcare-specific LLMs to be able to answer those kind of questions. And it's not that we wanted to retry, uh, but uh, for example, here you can see one example of a question. And on the right, you can see an actual answer from GPT-40. So we ask a question, it will give you a, 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 what looks as a fairly reasonable and fairly complex uh, SQL statement. And by the way, the, the SQL statements that you need in healthcare uh, are much more complex than what the usual benchmark for text-to-SQL systems are. Uh, so even if your model and does reasonably belong text-to-SQL, it's it's not going to do well here. Uh, here are the problems we've seen with, for example, with GPT-40. First of all, accuracy. Uh, this very nice and very complex query is just plain incorrect. It just does not return the correct result at all. Uh, on top of that, if you look at the code, uh, there are actually some commented lines where it tells you, please replace this with the correct codes for this. And so it's not even a complete executable thing. But most importantly, it just doesn't return the answer, period. Uh, second issue is on consistency. Uh, this system is just not usable in practice in a production setting if it gives you a different result if you call again. Okay, give me all the patients with this condition. Now I'm asking you again, you give me a different set of patients. Uh, at that point, any doctor will tell you, look, I'm just, you've just lost trust. I'm, I'm moving away. Uh, so uh, our goal was to build a system that would be consistent every time. And the third uh, issue is speed. It's not enough to have a SQL statement, even if it were accurate. Um, uh, it needs to be optimized, right? And we do want to uh, uh, be able to use these systems in a case where we have uh, you know, more than a billion uh, definite effects. Right, if not uh, documents, right, about the patients that we store, meaning we uh, those uh, uh, queries have to use the available indices, have to use the available materialized views, right, uh, really have to be optimized, right, because you cannot ask one question, get a response within five seconds, ask a slight variant, and get a response within five minutes, right. It's just not something that users will accept. Uh, so, being able to uh, also fine tune uh, the way questions are answered to the uh, specific optimizations we've built on the database was also very important. Um, so um, this is a, uh, the reason this is Johnson Lab solution, Johnson Lab's product, is because there are several uh, LLMs and medical language models that are involved here, uh, information extraction, semantic information extraction, uh, merging and deduplication, kind of the reasoning process of how you deal with multiple uh, facts or multiple modalities, uh, not exactly uh, fitting. How do you do the question answering? Uh, how you reply to natural language queries? How you do clinical inference, right? Like inferring risk scores or uh, basic patient conditions. Uh, and as you know, Johnson Labs really, all we do is we build state of the art uh, healthcare specific language models. Uh, so of course here we, we had to train and tune some new models and uh, put the whole system together. Uh, but uh, I guess, I mean, I did want to mention at least at some point in the presentation that 
uh, this is a generative AI solution uh, and actually uh, puts several of the different problems that have been worked on in the generative AI space together in one uh, a really very impactful end-to-end -end application. Uh, if you are interested to, uh, you know, to, to learn more, uh, try this solution, give us feedback, uh, you know, teach me something about how you've solved the same problem, please reach out to me and I, I, I very much look forward to uh, speaking with you and learning from you. Thank you.